Hello everyone! Today we're going to be jumping back into Historic Brawl with Hilda of the Icy Crown, the absolute bane of creature decks. Now Hilda is a 4 mana 3-4 creature with a very interesting ability. Whenever we tap an untapped creature an opponent controls, we can pay 1, and when we do that we can either create a 4-4 four, four white and blue elemental creature token, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each creature we control, or we can scry 2 and draw a card. So, we are going to be leaning into that tapping our opponent's creature strategy to get all of that additional value out of Hilda. So that means we're including cards like Icy Manipulator, letting us tap each turn, Hilda's Crown of Winter as well, doing the same thing. We have things like Dream Shackle Geist, letting us tap or keep creatures tapped down. And we're also using board-wide options like Sleep, for instance, which is going to tap all creatures our opponents control and stop them from untapping. So we have all of these options and all these ways to recurringly tap our opponent's creatures, gain value, build a board, and then we're really just going to swing out while all of our opponent's creatures are tapped down. We have a little bit of removal, a little bit of counter magic, we're running sword to plowshares as we should in white. We also have Baffling End. Now Baffling End is a little bit unique here in that we actually do like its downside. Giving our opponent a 3-3 green dinosaur creature token with trample gives our opponent a token that we can tap down with Hilda and get additional value out of. So that's just the reasoning behind grabbing that pick there. Aside from that, we also do have some planeswalkers in this deck. Teferi is going to go ahead and tap things for us, also give us additional value. And we have the Wandering Emperor, which can either exile one of our tapped the tapped creatures that we uh, do for our opponents, or we can go ahead and create those samurais or grow our threats and deal more damage over the course of the game. Aside from that, we've got a couple other cards for value, but that's really it. If you guys have been enjoying my content so far, make sure you subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on my latest videos. And if you do like this video, make sure you hit that like button down below. Let's go ahead and see how this deck does. All right, right off the bat, this seems like a pretty good starting hand. We'll go ahead and keep. And we'll go ahead and start with our white land. Hold up Swords to Plowshares. All right, let's play this on blue. This way we can hold up our Null. We also have Plunge into Winter. This will let us scry and draw a card as well as tapping. Could be good for finding our next land. Well, let's just use a Null there. No ramp for our opponent. We do want to find one more land if possible. I would like to get Hilda out next turn. Alright. Shocking for Explore, that's fine. I think we are just going to go ahead and cycle this. Submit zero. Yep. We couldn't have known that we were going to draw a land there. Let's play out our commander. Our opponent might have removal. But we'll see. If they go ahead and play out Atraxa, we have a couple of different options for how to deal with that. I think first and foremost, we're going to want to go Swords and the Elite Arrester, if that happens, but we'll see. Nope, Chromatic Lantern for Ram. And another tapped land. Ah, uh, and Shieldred's Edict, okay, so back in the command zone we go. Let's go ahead and play our Elite Arrester. And play out the liar. Okay, Takufu. Sure. It's gonna double our opponent's proliferating effects. Play the Glacial Fortress. I think we're just gonna swords this. Anything with a powerful effect like that, we don't really want to have on the battlefield. And of course, we can also use 
our arrestor and swift response to kill the next creature our opponent plays. Sure. Landfall proliferate, that's not too scary yet. Proliferating nothing, sure. Atraxa. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and kill this Atraxa now. Put him with only one card in hand. Alright, let's tap you down. Go ahead, swiftly respond. Alright. So now we will have some options for next turn. Ideally we're gonna see a land, but we do not. I think we're just gonna hold here. We can use the Arrestor to tap down the Evolution Sage. We might see Atraxa get replayed here. And we can buy ourselves a lot of time. Yep, one life. The proliferate does nothing. No proliferate payoff for our opponent. Okay. We'll go ahead and tap you. Alright, now while we can play out Hilda again this turn... Um, I think we're actually gonna go ahead and wait. I want to have one extra mana so we can hold up Shore Up, just in case that's a removal spell. Our opponent's been holding on to that for a while. And again, right now, with our Arrestor and with the Liar, we can pretty much tap down whatever. There you go. You don't get to attack with that. Back to my turn. All right. So now, we'll go for our commander. Perfect. Pass the turn. They'll use the removal spell, we'll shore up. And believe it or not, fatal push on the arrestor. So it seems like that is <laughs> the, the more worthwhile threat for our opponent. Okay, cool. They're gonna minus Kai to exile Hilda. At least that's my bet. Yep, this is why we save Shore Up. Alright. So now things are looking pretty good for us. Let's go ahead and... Use the Liar. Three. Tap down Evolution Sage. I'm gonna pay one. I'm gonna make our token. Kill the Planeswalker. Well, this wasn't what I signed up for. And the turn. Evolution Sage stays tapped down. Okay, there's a Traxa. Things are pretty good. We'll go ahead and untap this here. Nice. Alright, perfect. Stall for time. We'll go ahead and pay that kicker. Tap Atraxa. We'll pay one. Go ahead and make another creature. Play our land. Swing out. Key to the Archive. Okay, cool. Now there are a lot of different options for what our opponent can get here. Either way, with Tempest Caller and Sleep, we should be able to get a lot of tap value here. 
Okay, discarding Davriel, so whatever they have has to be better than that. Demonic Tutor is definitely better than a Davriel. I imagine it's just gonna be a Planeswalker threat. But surely nothing that's four mana. They're thinking about it. We have 11 damage next turn, which is going to be pretty good. We've got Sleep to keep their creatures tapped down. We do have the Liar as well. Yeah. Not sure if they have a way out immediately. Alright. Ah, the one ring. Nice. Junkwinder is going to be really good for our next turn. Let's go ahead and use Sleep here. Uh, we cannot target the player, though. That's right. Let's go Talarian Kraken, then. And then we'll just swing out. Just for fun. Doesn't really matter. Opponent's gonna get to untap on their next turn. We can't block Atraxa either way, and we'll be able to block Evolution Sage with our Kraken. Opponent's drawing some extra cards. Those extra cards might be an issue, but we'll see. Yep, we'll see what our opponent finds. See if they proliferate the ring for no reason. They do? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Alright. I don't think they'll have a way to untap the one ring, but... Either way, they're now taking three damage at the start of their next upkeep. Well, let's see. We're gonna get to tap down two of their creatures, potentially. They won't swing with the Evolution Sage. And now that we have four creatures on the battlefield, we get the same value out of putting plus one, plus one counters. All right, yeah, sure. More proliferation. That's fine. Swing with Atraxa. Yep. Will they increase the one ring again? Let's find out. And they do. All right, well, let's pay one. Tap Atraxa. Pay one. Plus one, plus one counter on everything. Let's go ahead, sleep. Target player. Pay one. Plus one, plus one counter on everything. Swing out. And we've got it. All right, we've got our opponent going first. This isn't terrible. I'm actually gonna be fine keeping this starting hand. So we'll go ahead and keep here. Everything's looking good. So we're playing up against an Ivy deck. We're gonna start with our tap land. Now you could make a case for keeping the shelter in our hand because we have some other cards, but we do really want to be hitting our land drops. Go ahead and play blue, give us access to all of our mana. Okay, so our opponent's playing an Ivy Mutate deck. That's pretty clear. Curious Obsession, sure. We'll just go ahead and kill that really quick. Alright. Looking good. I 
Next turn, we'll have Hilda. Sure. That's fine. Again, opponent needs ramp really badly here. So we already have that tempo advantage. I think we just kill this creature, though. So that's gonna take them off another mana. And then we'll hold up a blue mana, maybe make them a little bit afraid. And it seems like we've got it. All right, so opponent goes first, and we're playing up into Atali. Now, one land simply will not do, so we will have to take the mulligan here, and we'll keep this, despite having no blue lands. We're no strangers to needing to find a land to be able to cast some of our more expensive cards, so let's just go ahead and risk it and hope to get that payoff. Go ahead, end the turn here. Now, Solitary uh, Sanctuary is actually really good for us. Now, we can slowly start growing our creatures while we tap things, but we definitely need a blue land. So, let's see that blue land. Let's go Solitary Sanctuary. Tap you, put a plus one, plus one counter on our only creature. Now, Elvish Mystic can't attack us without dying. You know, not that that's really an upside, but it's kind of cool. Alright, yep. Some more Mana Dorks. Arcane Signet, yeah, that's fine as well. And we find the Blue Land Never Punished. Never Punished. Perfect. Play out our Commander. Everything's looking good. Opponent plays Atali, and that's fine. They hit Seal Away, which is very useful for them. And a Kami of the Bamboo Groves. This is very nice. Great Henge. Now, Great Henge is a pretty good pull for our opponent. Hollowed Fountain. Do I want to shock in the Hollowed Fountain? I do not think so. I think we will have it enter the battlefield tapped. Now, we will not attack our opponent and end the turn here. We have the ability to tap up to two target creatures, and then of course we'll be paying two to make extra 4-4s. Four Alright, now in response we'll go ahead and tap down our opponent's two largest creatures. Of course, we'll get plus one, plus one counters for this. So we'll distribute them like so, evenly amongst our creatures. And we will be paying. I will create an elemental. And I will create an additional elemental. Of course, our opponent will get to draw a card. And it's a land, so that concludes their turn. And they will not be able to attack here. I suppose they do have the Elvish Mystic. And honestly, we'll take the five. The next time we tap one of our opponent's creatures, we'll go ahead and put one more plus one plus one counter here, just so we don't have to deal with that again. All right, well. Thinking about it, I think we just flash this back. I think that's going to be the best way to deal with this. We're going to go ahead and move to combat, swing with, honestly, pretty much everything here. Swing out like so. Okay, good. We get a chump block, so that's that's a win for us. We get two chump blocks. Perfect. So we are definitely on the path to out-damaging our opponent. Let's go ahead and end the turn here. Surely they have a decent idea about what's going to happen here. Perfect. You spend all of your mana transforming a tally. We'll go ahead and tap you two. Put a plus one, plus one counter there. We'll put one more there. And it looks like we've got it. Good game. All right, everyone. So this deck, while it is rather weak into control decks and decks with too many creatures that goes wide, once it can find that sweet spot in the middle, is going to do great for you. You're going to stop your opponent from being able to swing at you with their one or two big threats. 
and you're going to gradually build up a huge board and be able to swing tempo in your favor, which is really strong. Now we do have the inclusion of some fun new cards from Wilds of Eldraine here that we get in Historic Brawl. Things like Ristic Steady, which is always fun to run in blue, and also Spreading Seas, which will put in a decent amount of work for us, actually. Disrupting our opponent's mana base is very powerful. Similarly, as a blue and white deck, we do have access to some strong options for removal as well, like Swords to sh Plowshares, but we do also have that ability to tap down our opponent's creatures, making it very difficult for them to actually get ahead. Now, one of the tips for when playing this game is make sure you mulligan aggressively. You really do want to be hitting your land drops and you really want to be ramping towards that late game. The early turns don't really matter as much as you would think they do. If you do have cheap creatures that can tap things, get them out onto the battlefield, but definitely play for that late game. Now, I do hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you have any ideas for another deck you'd like to see me play, why don't you let me know in a comment down below. I'll see you all next time.